Today, I'm here with Matias, the CEO of PineGrow, to talk about the release of their WordPress plugin. Rather than do a tutorial or another demonstration, we thought it might be fun to sit down and do this as an interview. So for the benefit of everyone who isn't familiar with PineGrow, can you tell me a little bit about the product? Yeah, first of all, hi, hi Adam, and thank you for, for doing this, sure. uh, for taking the time. So yeah, PineGrow, as we say, it's a visual website editor for professionals. So it lets you build projects using standard HTML, CSS uh, frameworks like Bootstrap, Tailwind, and then add in some WordPress interactions. And then depending on what you need, you can either export this as a WordPress team, or you can take this project uh, elsewhere, integrate it into your own CMS, um, it basically helps you to come up with HTML and CSS in an easier, less codey way for those tasks where this makes sense. And it lets you use code editors or whatever your favorite tools are for the rest of the tasks. So that would be in a nutshell. And then when it comes to, Pine, to WordPress, we have a um, special feature we call WordPress Builder that lets you then define how, how HTML should, or let, let's say another way, it lets you add dynamic WordPress functions to your HTML projects and then export standard native PHP-based WordPress plugins and themes. This has been yeah. around for a while. So, so what's this new thing that you're releasing? Well, yeah, PineGrow has been around since like, since like 2014. So that's eight years. But what we are releasing now is PineGrow packaged as a WordPress plugin. And that means that instead of using desktop app to work on your projects, you install PineGrow plugin directly to your WordPress site and then you get all the PineGrow features right there. Kind of, it turns your WordPress site into a fully featured visual development environment. And then if you work with WordPress, you can directly deploy plugins and themes that you built in the browser with PineGrow. So you put a lot of effort into this. What, what made you decide to take it from the desktop and build a WordPress version? So desktop version, especially uh, when we talk about WordPress builder has been around for a long time. And one kind of complaint we often heard from users or potential users was the, the need to after you kind of export the, the project and then there are additional steps to get it on your WordPress site. And it might sound like insignificant, kind of mindless task of uploading something, but you know how busy we are nowadays, each additional step, it kind of presents an obstacle and, and it makes you, makes you postpone the projects you want to do and say, oh, okay, I, I, it, this is nice, but I will not use it. So that's like one reason. To, to make the development process easier. And then also to take advantage of what WordPress offers us. It's, it's a platform, it's a backend with database. So why not use that? Why not uh, you know, go directly to, to the site where things happen? So that's kind of two reasons. And the third reason is PineGrow is basically a, a web app packaged as a desktop app. And to me, like my, my I guess, passion is, is development. And, and I always felt, wow, it would be great to get PineGrow to run in the browser. And as you know, we had PineGrow online, which does that, but it was never released publicly because we don't really want to go into hosting and all associated um, things that come with that. But WordPress lets us do it in a self-hosted way. So it lets us package PineGrow and give it out to people 
um, so that they can self-host their own online editor. And to me, that's something that is very cool in a way, you know, that suddenly you, you become free of desktop and, and you get to use Pinegro in the browser, but under your control. Mm. It's not like cloud solution. I mean, it's in your own cloud, whatever that is. So that's just something cool that uh, was there, you know, like the mountain, it was there, so we climbed it. So similar to that. So it kind of begs the question, um, you know, there's so many other platforms and page builders and blocks and add-ons and things like that for WordPress. What makes PineGrow different? Why, why should somebody choose to use PineGrow rather than one of these other products out there? Yeah, so PineGrow, it's not a page builder as you yourself often explained very well, I think better than me, um, because Pangro doesn't aim to replicate WordPress functionality, or it doesn't try to come up with a different way of building stuff. But what it lets you do, it lets you do like build teams and plugins and blocks in a standard WordPress way, but easier, quicker, without coding, without React, without compiling stuff. Um, PineGrow takes care of all the boring parts and lets you kind of, um, lets you really do what you need. Uh, let me explain this a little bit more. I, I did a lot of uh, my, my, I ran an ag agency a long time ago and we did a lot of custom work. And when it comes to client projects, it's not really about the things that we developers think they're most important, like the, the CMS, the version, the framework, the language. First of all, it's structuring the information, structuring the content, and then, of course, presenting it in an accessible, visually appealing way, and then letting users, content editors, manage the, this content not just once, but like continuously, some projects can, can run for 10 years without redesigns, without re-implementations. So the way that we offer with PineGrow is really project-led WordPress development, led by the needs of each individual project. So if you have a project that would really benefit from, I don't know, having a custom post type for events that are then displayed with such and such template or in such and such presentation. And PineGrow lets you do that in the easiest possible way. So you don't have to install plugins for that. You don't have to kind of break other products and page builders into your shape of what you need. You can simply start with HTML, CSS, and you can build what the project at hand needs. And, you know, like when, when we talk about Gutenberg blocks, if you, if you look at the WordPress official guide on how to build such a block, you know, it's like you can scroll. It takes minutes to just scroll this document. So would you really build 10 custom Gutenberg blocks for, I don't know, one specific project? Probably not, because it's just too much effort. The price to pay is too high. But with Pygro in the equation, that's, that's really trivial work for most blocks. You just design HTML layout, you do the CSS, and then Pygro does the rest. You, you say, this is editable, this is the block, and there you have it. So it brings the price or the effort required to do custom things like significantly down to, to, to make, it makes it insignificant. And then what it lets you do is, sorry. No, no, go, go ahead. But you know, you have your custom project and you see, wow, it would really be perfect to organize information in this particular way. And then you can do that because with PineGrow, it doesn't involve like two months of coding and stuff complicated stuff like that. You just design it, you export, and there it is. You touched on a few things there that I, I want to dive into. And 
Um, one of the words that you said was accessible, and I know you didn't mean it in terms of accessibility the way that we talk about web accessibility now, uh, but I think it's important to mention that one of the reasons why I like using PineGrow is because I can build accessible websites with it. Uh, and I don't have to rely on other tools and other developers to uh, build accessibility into it. It's something that I can go out and I can find the specs and I can make sure that something is uh, an accessible component and that it meets the needs of my client rather than trying to take my client's requirements and fit them into the way that the tool works. So, um, you know, you, you sort of talked around those points, mm -hmm. but I think that's that's really worth pointing out. For smaller projects where, you know, a hobby project or something for, you know, one or two person business, you, sure, you can get away with building to the tool specs. But, uh, you know, like you said, you, you ran an agency, you had projects that lasted for, you know, five plus years. And for anybody that's doing serious work like that, um, it is really important to be able to look at the requirements first and build to those requirements. Uh, and that's exactly what Pine Grow lets us do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And Although we don't implement like all the features like accessibility that you just mentioned, but Pinegrow doesn't stand in a way when you want to implement those. So as you, as you mentioned, you can still use HTML, CSS, JavaScript, whatever you want to add the features that are missing. So the, the purpose of Pinegrow is not to be like all in one or like to be the Swiss knife with all the features you might want with sliders and carousels and tabs and I don't know what else, but it's a solid base that lets you build whatever you want or yeah. just take components and, and you know, plug them in into Pinegrow projects. Oh, we'll talk about, uh, we'll talk about those plugins and components yeah. in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other things that you mentioned, though, was how Pinegrow lets you do things faster and cheaper than other solutions, than, than hand coding things, um, mm -hmm. and, and easier. And that's kind of interesting because one of the things that I hear a lot of people say is they think that Pinegrow is more complicated. Um, so, you know, like any, like any product, uh, you know, development product or complex project, there's going to be a learning curve. Um, what kind of things does Pinegrow offer now that lets people overcome that learning curve and actually get into the product so that they can be efficient with it and they can get to a point where uh, they're able to use it just as quickly as you know any page builder or any block theme on the market? Yeah, so what, what we are trying to do now, and in the past, we often launch like new features without really paying attention to helping users effectively use those features. And then it's kind of waste. And, and sometimes I'll even, even, you know, even we in our team, we, we forget what we have. And then we, we discover a feature that's there for a few years already. And we're like, wow, we, we had this, we forgot about it. So actually it was, I don't know, two years ago. And that was a project I did with my son a kind of fun project, we, we built HTML, pro, HTML planet for kids, which is based on Pinegrow and it has a lot of lessons uh, for kids to learn about HTML. And there, when, when I did that, I was thinking kind of few steps in advance and I said, okay, I will build stuff for HTML planet that will also be useful for Pinegrow. And then two things came out of that. So first of all, it was the ability to run Pinegrow in the browser. So Pinegrow online and also this plugin. And second, we have like built in interactive tutorial platform. So now what we are doing, and you, you will see if you, if you install the WordPress plugin, we have directly on the dashboard, we have interactive tutorials. So we will start with the tutorial that will show you how to build a custom Gutenberg block from scratch. And it's not just focusing on the WordPress parts, but like everything. You start with a blank page and then you do the HTML layout, the CSS editing, the CSS grid stuff, responsive stuff. And then you add WordPress uh, features to, to export this into a block. So, and now that we have this, and we, we already used it in Pinegrow 7, like the desktop brother app, 
um, we, we want to really cover like all Pine Grove features so that once you install Pine Grove, you're not faced with this like empty UA user interface and you have to then figure out what to do. But uh, now we have a way to show you, to take you step by step and like show you not too much at, at each step, but like short few minutes tutorials that will give a good overview of what Pine Grove has to offer. And for us, um, this, this is also a very good way to test Pine Grove. Mm. And like most bugs we discover when we are actually putting documentation tutorials together, then you really go through everything. And also you see, oh, this step doesn't make sense. Just for illustration, you know, like in this build your block tutorial, we'll, we have a step where you make it responsive. So you have to create a media query and assign, uh, like do some styling for that. And when I was designing this tutorial step two months ago, it just didn't make sense. You know, like, oh, so much clicking and how can I explain how to do it? You have to go there and manage and click there. Like it was like too long. And I said, well, that's obviously a, a, a point that we need to optimize. And then I went back and added the media tabs, media size tabs into the visual CSS um, editor. So kind of these two things help each other. So when we make tutorials, we are in the shoes of our users. And then these tutorials help our users to really understand and take advantage of all the features in Pine Room. Is that why yeah. you cringe every time I make a tutorial because you know I'm gonna put some bug reports <laughs> in for you? <laughs> yeah, that's always like that. But you know, I, I prefer to know about the problems that we have then have problems and not about them and not know about them. Because it's very satisfactory when you have this, like, you know, when you send your bug lists and it just piles up everywhere. But then when you go in and then you just cross this one and that and done, 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 and things just visibly get better. It feels great good feeling. to cross things off a list. It feels good. Yeah. <laughs> So, the, you know, there's really three parts to this. Um, you know, there's understanding how to use Pine Grow. Uh, and because Pine Grow is so powerful, there's a lot to it. So I love the I love the tutorials there because it really does walk you through the interface and where things are, how to use it. Uh, then there is just plain learning how to do HTML and CSS, uh, which can also be really complicated. And, and then on top of all of that, then you've got all this WordPress stuff that you've got to figure out. Um, so there really are, you know, a lot of layers to to this that you've got to understand at least at a conceptual level, because Pine Grove takes care of all the really complicated stuff. It takes care of all the PHP. It takes care of the JavaScript and React things. Um, but you do need to have a decent grasp on those three things, or at least enough of a grasp to figure it out yourself. Mm -hmm. um, to really get into it, and I think those tutorials that you're building uh, help a lot. Your website has some fantastic tutorials on there if you want to do some some long form things. Um, I love going through those and I learn something from all the time, um, you know, not just about Pine Grove, but just, you know, web in general. Um, and then there's just a ton of videos. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I congratulate you on all the work that you've done over the years to build these things out. Yeah, thanks. And um, it's an ongoing process. And, um, you know, like, one, one just uh, one thing I remember is maybe good to mention because some some users might feel like a bit frustrated, like oh I don't know enough HTML I don't know enough CSS I don't know enough about WordPress to use Pine Grow. but you know look at it from uh, other side, and then if you have the wish to learn these things or if you have the motivation to do to learn about HTML, CSS, WordPress, then Pine Grow is really very useful educational tool. Because it is, you know, you do something visually in HTML and you also see what happened in the code. And same with CSS, same with WordPress. So even 
and and then my advice to kind of users who feel intimidated would be okay what deciding whether Pango is good for you or not depends on what you want if you are fine with not knowing about html css wordpress and just using i don't know the simplest way possible to build stuff then Pango is probably not for you but if you have curiosity or you have the wish to like up your skills to learn more about what you don't know now then Pango can be a great friend um, for you and it's we have yeah we have schools we have universities using Pango in the classroom exactly because of that and i like the fact that i can click on that code button you know, especially on the, the WordPress builder, I can click on the code button and see exactly what it's doing and exactly the yeah. PHP that it's going to write mm -hmm. for me. And it's also really interesting to look out there at what other products are doing and what other, uh, you know, other trainings that are out there. And I'm seeing more and more that um, people are putting out tutorials and training for uh, WordPress blocks and for these page builders that are so complicated and you've got to jump through all these hoops to do things that in Pine Grow is just a few clicks or a yeah. line of dual code, mm -hmm. um, because all these things are built visually without the flexibility that Pine Grow offers. Um, and, you know, in some cases, it makes it harder to use than just, you know, putting in a CSS variable and mm -hmm. calling it a day. Um, yeah. So it, there yeah. is, I've learned so much since using Pine Grow. Um, and I think anybody that is uh, interested in learning more, um, you know, once you dive in and do a project or two, it's hard to go back. Yeah. So it kind of leads me into the next question. Um, and, and that's that a lot of WordPress products, they come with all these components and libraries and layouts and helpers and things like that. And Pine Grove doesn't really have any of that. You, you touched on this before. Um, can you help me understand the reason why you've never built out all those pieces inside of Pine Grow? Yeah, like Pine Grow started when we launched in 2014. It, it came bundled in with Bootstrap. I think Bootstrap 3 at the time. And then Bootstrap also had a bunch of components. And Pine Grow also worked with plain CSS, with plain HTML, of course, but it came with Bootstrap. So our thinking at that time was why duplicate the, the work and come up with our own framework, with our own component library. And then we will have to spend time and precious resources on maintaining it, uh, on, on basically replicating the work that Bootstrap team is already doing very well. And then we can focus on our end on building the app that can help people use Bootstrap and Bootstrap guys can focus on making Bootstrap better. And then Bootstrap 4 came and 5 and this strategy worked well for us because like most, like Bootstrap for example, it really gained a lot of market share among developers. So even if we would have our own framework, it could never compete with that. And then it would become a handicap for Pine Grove. People would say, oh, I, it's nice, but I, I want to use Bootstrap. And then Tailwind came and really became popular. So we followed the same approach. And we kept, actually we, we invested a lot, a lot of extra effort to keeping Pine Grove general so that it can open and edit and write normal HTML, CSS files, like development wise and UA, user interface wise, that's very hard to pull off. And also that's one of the reason why Pangro is more complicated, that complicated than Webflow, for example. Now Webflow, they have their own um, framework, their own little garden of what features they support. And then they can really optimize the user interface around that. And with Pine it was a conscious decision that we don't want that, that we want to keep it open so that people can use it with any HTML based project. But that also meant we have to support, you know, like people can open whatever they want in Pine Grove. As long as it's based on HTML, they should be able, able to edit it in Pine Grove. 
So anyway, that was that was decision from the start that I think it was good. Even looking back, it, it paid off. And at the same time, like keeping it general, users are free to use any component libraries or frameworks that they that they like. Um, in some, like we help, with, for example, Tailwind UI, we have a small helper that makes it easier. But but Pangro has feature called page library, and you you can open any URL, any HTML page, and and have it there in the library panel, and drag components from there to your page, and you can define your own libraries, and so on. So that was our approach to give people freedom to, to use whatever they want and to stay on the general HTML so that all of these different things can be used and um, taken advantage in, in Pine Grove. Yeah. And that's yeah. nice because I can go out and you know, there's, there's a million libraries out there that have components that have you know, uh, JavaScript that have uh, you know, entire pages. And I can just copy and paste that code straight into Pine Grove and you know, I'm off to the races. You know, I don't have yeah. to do any plugins. I don't have to worry about those dependencies. I don't have to worry about dragging and dropping. I just copy and paste and done. So that that yeah. is really nice. Yeah, that's that's so by design. <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and it seems like it's a it seems like it's a downside at first because they're not built in. But then you know, again, like other things, the openness and the flexibility really works to your advantage uh, once you understand how how it all fits together. Yeah. So you mentioned the um, the ability to open those pages and libraries inside of Pine Grove. Um, is that still something that's only available on the desktop, or is that also on the WordPress plugin now? Well, for for now, it works best on desktop. So there, you can really open like remote URL, local local page, whatever. But with desktop, with plugin, we are more limi limited. Like browsers have. Uh, cross origin restrictions, you can't just open any URL. So we do offer, because we, we did end up making our own libraries. They're called Pangro blocks for Tailwind and for Bootstrap. So they're like collections of ready-made kind of content blocks you can use on your Bootstrap and Tailwind projects. So that is available in, um, in Pangro plugin. And like going forward, I, that would be a very useful feature to develop. Like imagine, you know, you have like tens or 20 projects that you are projects that you are working on. And then you de you develop a very useful block for something on one project. So it makes no sense to re redo that for other projects. Instead, it makes sense to kind of click and say, remember this or put it in a library or whatever. And then it becomes available in, in across everything you do. Yeah. So, and like um, having online backend like WordPress that should be possible to pull off. Mm -hmm. So for example, you can install Pangaro plugin on one of your WordPress instances, and then you can start using it as a repository of your components and reusable parts. Let's write that down and put and it on a uh, feature request. Put it on our to-do <laughs> list, yeah. <laughs> and I have a very cool status which says deferred. And then I, when I click that, I also feel like, oh, that's now done. So <laughs> of course it'll get deferred if it's my name next to it. They, they all get yeah. deferred. Um, so but, but it, yeah, yeah, like that's really, I think one, uh, it would be very cool feature to do uh, like midterm and then companies, agencies, or individuals, you know, they can start to, to have a, a kind of online centralized repository for their reusable components, and then just use them across different projects. Um, yeah, that would be very nice. Yeah. And in the meantime, you just open your project and copy and paste the code and yeah, it's, so it's really not that much, with, that much more complicated. Yeah, with old fashioned copy and paste. Exactly. It's the best um, invention. So, you know, we, we touched on the desktop a little bit, mm -hmm. and I saw on the forums that some people were a little bit concerned that mm -hmm. all this focus on the WordPress plugin is taking the attention away from Pine Grove desktop. Mm -hmm. um, and you and I know that's not the case, but maybe you can uh, speak to it a little bit. Yeah. 
So, you know, I mentioned the HTML planet for kids. And when I decided to spend, and it was like a year of maybe like, I don't know how many, 500 hours in that. But when I think of what to do, what to implement, I always think of, okay, where else can we use this feature? So how to leverage it? And then if it's just something that, oh, this is only useful for HTML planets and, and that's it, would probably not go and implement it. But seeing, oh, if we do that, and then this opens up like the online doors for us to run Pangro in browser. And if we do that, and then we have WordPress as a backend, and we have WordPress tools to build WordPress stuff, then this opens more possibilities. And then if all of this is basically same code that runs on desktop and in the browser, then this just expands kind of, um, you know, we have one thing like our code or our features, but it lets us package it in different boxes and send out in more different places, like sell in more shops. And then at the end, this helps us because, you know, as a team, we have to have a sustainable business. We have to sell enough of Pangro in order to keep working on it, to invest in improving it. So it makes a lot of sense from the perspective that like 95% of the code is the same and then like if, if desktop is this big, the market, and then we can go, we can expand it to here with the browser, it makes sense. And of course, like we, and that's another downside of being general purpose editor, then people really have very diverse needs and requirements and if you check our forum, how many feature requests we get, they're really from all, all like huge spectrum of, uh, of like web development uh, space. And we can't do everything. So we have to have some kind of selection process. And we have to, when we implement features, we have to be kind of sure, be confident that they make business sense. So like people asked us to do like Drupal integration. I mean, it's nice CMS and I used it in the past, but looking at the market share of Drupal versus WordPress, it just doesn't make sense. It, we, we can't do it. And we have like requests about better PHP integration. But again, nowadays PHP on websites is mostly WordPress not so many custom projects. And again, we have to say no to that feature. Um, so it's hard for me, I, I, you know, I, I, when, when something feels, oh yeah, that, that's, that would work very well in Pangro. Yes, yes, I would want to do it, but we are kind of limited with uh, resources and with kind of having to then actually implement and support that. So yeah. we have to be selective. And I think people yeah, might be surprised. Yeah. Yeah. I think people might be surprised to see that. Um, just take the release notes for version seven, for example. I'd say half, if not more, of those features came from the development of Pinegrow WordPress. Correct? Yeah. So, so all that work that you put into WordPress uh, Pinegrow made its way back to desktop. Yeah, um, it shows up in, in in desktop, and and now uh, and just to like. You said some people are maybe feel like uh, worried about what will happen with desktop, but you know, just a week or two weeks ago, we released Pangro 7 with, with uh, lots of improvements. And not only that, but under the hood, we, we also merged all the code from like our online WordPress desktop version to bring it back together. So now, it's all these projects, if you look at their code they're using, they're like kind of at the same place. So all the backward compatibilities were taken care of. So, and now it's really, once you are there, at kind of at the tip, everything, then a feature in one really quickly shows up in another uh, product. 
So yeah, I definitely. would I would see this as an advantage. Definitely. Yeah. And you know, you had talked one time um, about that uh, the release cycles for Pine Grow were pretty big and, and pretty long. And uh, one of the things that you wanted to do was to try to do more frequent, smaller updates, mm -hmm. uh, correct? And hopefully yeah. bringing that all together helps with that. It helps with that. And like we tried with Pine Grow Live, that was a desktop version that loaded from the server, but actually didn't work out because some things we were just unable to do to, to update in that way. So we are kind of depreciating Pine Grow Live. But uh, we have desktop Pangro and we have Pangro plugin and a couple of other products. So, and all of them are, yeah, are synchronized code wise. So Great. it's very easy to transfer features from one to another. So, so then what's next for Pangro? Now, now we have the plugin out. Uh, what, what's yeah. next on your radar? Well, now we have the plugin out, and I'm sure there won't be any problems with it. It will go so smoothly. It's so polished, you know, thanks to you and all other beta testers. So I think I could go on holidays now, just relax and no well, problem. You're going to release and then uh, go spend the day at the pool, right? That's what was going to happen? Oh, yeah, actually, I'm on the pool already because we're <laughs> traveling around. So I'm already ready here. Just press the button and run out. <laughs> and then I'll check in January just to see, you know, the bag of money that cloud <laughs> that right. from the sky. So, but okay, usually when we launch new stuff, then suddenly some problems come up, of course, and we'll just take care of any issues that come up like very as soon as possible. And also like packaging stuff as WordPress plugin lets us do that. We just can press a button, push a new version out and people update. So that's very nice. Um, so, but when, when it comes to the next big steps for Pine Grow, uh, let me give some historical overview, I think, to, to, to show the significance. And we said five or 10 minutes at start, but I think we are like a couple a of over. multiples over that. But um, what is considered to be like state of the art or modern web development changed so much since we launched in 2014. At that time, like Bootstrap was like the state of the art, the, the modern way to build web stuff. And now it's all this React and view and, and single page apps and complicated build process and NPM and I don't know, and VIP and, and stuff like that. And in that regard, Pinegrow kind of fell behind. We didn't launch anything to address this kind of modern way of developing web applications. Um, but actually for, and this has been already a year or so. We are working with, with uh, Ahmed uh, Kaja. He's one of our like longtime Pangra users. And he took the initiative on himself to come up with a way to use Pangra with Vue. And then we, we really started to work closely on that because there are also things that we needed to change in, in Pangro to make that possible. And what Ahmed came up with, it's really very, very impressive. And I don't want to give any like surprises out at this stage, but I think, I hope we'll soon be able to show to the community what we have and what is coming out. So that the first, would be kind of integrating view development into Pinegrow. And then once we have that working, we could expand that to, to other similar technologies. So that's we one- We hands on that. Yeah. So that's like one big thing that is coming out, hopefully very soon. Um, yeah, and, and other stuff, you know, we just continue to improve like um, the user interface, the, the workflow of, of, uh, of um, things like CSS editing, 
also Tailwind editing. Like nowadays, CSS and frameworks like Tailwind, they become a bit similar with, with this like thousands of utility classes or properties. And, and just clicking on these visual controls might not always be the best, the most effective way to do that. So, and we have a prototype already built and it, it offers kind of tree-based editor. Um, but yeah, I didn't want to make this video longer, <laughs> but no, there's okay. something coming up there as well. Um, I'd say and, you know, another and, one that I hear a lot yeah. about is uh, block themes because yeah. that's just a thing with WordPress that uh, for some reason it's still mm -hmm. in beta inside the builder, um, but everyone's talking about it. Mm -hmm. And since Pine Grove was able to build native classic themes now, mm -hmm. um, I know you and I have spoken about you know block themes and you know when's going to be the right time. Um, is, is that something that's on your radar or uh, tell me, talk more about that for me. Yeah, definitely. And we have like... Uh, reports from users who are not just requesting this feature, but they're also saying, oh, look, I already implemented it in Pine Grove. So that's what I did. You just need to create, you know, this JSON file and that and that folder and that file, and then it works. So as, as much as I, I didn't go into details with like full site uh, editing yet in WordPress, but the, what I, I what I know, it looks not too difficult to integrate into current Pine Grove workflow for WordPress. Yeah. And we are getting more and more requests about that. So I think when it comes to WordPress features in Pine Grove, that is the next step that we will be working on. Yeah, and I've done it too. I've done a few um, FSE projects with Pine Grove and it does work out great. You just need to understand a few things. And, uh, you know, like you said, that the theme.json is probably the biggest uh, hurdle. So mm -hmm. um, make that integrate with Pine Grow, uh, and make that integrate with the, the frameworks uh, is probably going to be one of the bigger challenges. Uh, but we'll talk yeah. about that offline. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, now this thing's out, talk to me mm -hmm. about the, uh, you know, the, the launch offers and, mm -hmm. um, you know, what you're doing for existing Pine Grow desktop customers, people mm -hmm. that might want to be able to use uh, both products together. Let's talk money. Yeah. So first of all, we, we are extending our Thanksgiving sale. So every November we start like in mid-November Thanksgiving sale, and then we rename it to Black Friday sale. And then it got to rena it, we rename it to Cyber Monday. And then it becomes the st Thanksgiving sale again. <laughs> so we are extending it until, we, until this point where when the plugin came out, because we are offering 35% off of the plugin licenses and the normal desktop Pine Grove licenses. And then on top of that, we have like existing Pine Grove users that we wanted to do something special for them. So the original plan was to give a 50% off Pine Grove WordPress plugin for existing Pine Grove users. And then all of the, the launch got delayed and delayed. And I, I kind of got, you know, bad conscience because of that, kind of oh, felt bad. Oh, I promised and again, not. And Adam did the countdown and we came all the day, all the way to day one <laughs> and it got postponed again. So that kind of made, made me think, okay, how about we just let existing users stack the discount so they get 50% off on top of 35% off from the Thanksgiving sale. And that doesn't add up to 85% discount. It's like math is tricky because first you take off 35, you get 65 and then you take off 50 of 65. So anyway, this ends up to about 67% off. And uh, this is our launch offer for existing users. I, I, I think it's very generous. I mean, Pine Grove plugin, what it packs in all those Pine Grove features, it is a very, very great value. And even if you just buy it to do the build your first blog tutorial, I think it, it's worth it because you, you will learn a lot. Um, so yeah, that, that's a really, really sweet deal. 
And then if, if you are watching and you are sad because you are not an existing Pangro user, let me give you a, a kind of secret a tip. Don't tell it anywhere. So you can first buy Pangro desktop with 35% off because we, our Thanksgiving sale is still on. And this will make you an existing Pangro user. And then, and we'll do that in the email when you get your license for desktop Pangro. There you will also get the discount code for 50% off the plugin. So if you want both, first get the desktop and then you will qualify for additional 50% off from the plugin. And that's a nice bundle. And it makes sense to, to own both because pro projects are interchangeable mostly. So you can upload desktop projects to Pingro plugin and vice versa. Um, so yeah, it's a very nice bundle, I think, to own. And also what we are doing, this discount is not just for the first year. Like very often you, you get this kind of deals, but then in the small print, you know, they say, oh, it's only for the first year. Hate that. We never do that. When we give a discount, it's always like forever. And we never like raised our subscription prices on existing users so far. And we'll do our best to, do, to avoid doing that in the future. So yeah, it's a good deal. It's a very and, good deal. And, so you're offering oh, one year yeah. license. I'm sorry, you're offering one site licenses and then unlimited site licenses, correct? For the plugin? Unlimited. Yeah. Unlimited. Yeah. So That's it's fantastic. just like, you know, like in life, in one or infinite. So it's just two, everything else is in between there. So yeah. You, you don't jump either... from $40 to $900. It's a, it's a pretty small jump there. So I think it makes mm -hmm. sense. Maybe it should also cost infinite dollars. Infinite dollars. Now when we mention that. <laughs> Let's do that and crash the economy. <laughs> All right. Anything but, else uh, before we uh, before we wrap? Anything uh, else that you want to tell people? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And just to add, so we talked about like this nice bundle deal. But if you are sure that you don't need desktop Pangro, we have thirty five percent off the plugin licenses as long as the Thanksgiving sale uh, lasts, and that's probably until next week. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. It, and the, the sale is a fantastic deal. I think the bundle is just an amazing deal. You're practically giving it away. Um, so, I, you know, I'm really hoping Ooh, that a lot of people mm, jump no, on this. Now you got me thinking. Maybe I know. Mm. Uh, <laughs> nah, yeah. I, I hope people jump on this. It's a fantastic product. And I know you put your heart and soul into it. And the whole team's just done an amazing job. Uh, so I would love to see people get on this and, you know, really find out what it's all about. And don't be afraid of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and just to mention, you know, we also have free version. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So, Tell me more. Uh, so it's actually zero, one, and infinite. These are all the numbers that matter. So we have free version that has some limitations. So it can be used to create simple custom Gutenberg blocks and export that in plugins and use on your existing sites but it doesn't let you build complex blocks uh, that, that have sub blocks. It doesn't let you build whole teams. It doesn't have WooCommerce. It doesn't have interactions and, and some other stuff, but it's a great start. So if you are not sure, you know, what to do, is Pangro good for me or not? How to find out? That's the very good start. Install the free version of the plugin and there you also have this tutorial that we mentioned, build your first block. And you can do like two thirds of these tutorials, you can do with the free version. And only the last part requires the pro version. So you can install the free version, do the tutorial, and then you will be very, I, I'm sure you will be able to confidently judge if Pangro is something for you or not. So that's the best way to start. So, you know, it's, it's funny. I went back to a few of my projects just to see what kind of things I was building. And more than 80% of the blocks that I built, I can do with the free version of Pine Grow. So yeah. it is not a restricted version right. at all. Uh, it, is, it is something that people can actually use for real projects 
um, and for, for real work and get a lot of stuff done. So, uh, you know, the fact that you're giving that away is again, just fantastic and, and very generous. Yeah, it's, you know, in, we never did that so far. In eight years of Pangra, we never had a free version. So this is kind of experiment for us. I hope it will work out. Um, but yeah, it's just the best way to, to learn about Pine Grove. So yeah, I hope that people will be happy. Well, thank you so much for uh, meeting with me today. I know this has gone way beyond the five or 10 minutes that we talked yeah. about. <laughs> um, but you know, hopefully there is enough here for, for people to really get a good sense of what Pine Grove is and uh, you know, um, why they should be using it. And you know, just get to understand uh, Pine Grove as a company a little bit more. Yeah, th thank you, Adam, for, for your time and for all the work you do. Like your videos are really top notch and uh, they're better than our videos <laughs> because you're, you're, you're kind of unbiased. You know, we are all biased. It's our product. Not that we would want to promote it and say others are bad, but it's just, we are so much into it that sometimes it's hard to approach it from the perspective of, an, of a developer who is not, who is not us. So your videos are really great in that regard. And so thank you very much for all the work you do and you know for taking the time for this chat. Um, yeah. All so right. let's thank you so much. And happens. I'm sure we will uh, talk later. Yeah, take care. <laughs> all right, take care. <laughs>